ruckus. Yo, so what does it mean to be an ambassador for Christ? And what responsibility does that hold? Get your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, because we're about to jump into that topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get straight off into biblical topics without a lot of unnecessary fluff and or distraction. Man, today we want to jump into the idea of what it means to be an ambassador for Christ, and what responsibility does that hold when we say or call ourselves believers. A lot of times we think about being a believer simply as being one who has received the gift of salvation, and that's it. That's the end of the script. But is there a responsibility on us as believers? Once we sign up, is there something that we have to understand about the lifestyle? We think about it a lot of times we talk about on straight word, the fact that God calls us to count up the cost before taking the journey. In other words, before calling yourself a believer, understand what the cost is going to be and make that decision with, with that knowledge in mind. So, is being an ambassador a part of that cost? Let's jump into some scripture and we're going to investigate that topic today. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to start reading from verse 18 and finish out that chapter down to verse 21. There reads, And all things... Are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation, ambassadors for Christ. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So what exactly do we gain from this passage? What understanding is this passage trying to give us? First off, we see that God did a work first. He did something by allowing us to be saved by the action of giving Jesus Christ the Son as a payment for our sin. So that was nothing that we did, not by our power, not by our decision making, it was simply what God did to send a, a sacrifice for us and for our sins. Okay, so that's the first key. And secondly, it says in that passage that along with that sacrifice that God gave through Christ Jesus, he has also given us something. It says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So there we see we are given a gift, but it's a ministry. Remember the word minister means to serve. So now our new uh, uh, service or uh, uh, some people may say job, some people may say uh, uh, mission, but our new service is a service of reconciliation. Okay. So, and, and, and the next verse, it kind of um, solidifies that fact of what we just learned. It, it goes over the case again. Yes, God gave Jesus for our sins, which was the first act of reconciliation for us. But now in this verse, it tells us now we have been committed into the word of reconciliation committed so now it goes from it simply being a gift 
of our new ministry or our new service of our life to us being committed. So now we have a, a responsibility to uphold, um, and that's the word of reconciliation. What is the word of reconciliation, you might ask? Simply the gospel, the word of, of what was done for us. The first reconciliation, which God did through uh, uh, Christ Jesus, him dying for our sins and giving us that chance of reconciliation ourselves. So now the word of reconciliation is for us to spread that truth to those who don't know it. So it is important that we understand that what, uh, what our job is and what our responsibility is because that helps us understand the next idea given in this passage. The next idea is given, it says that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. Now, what does that mean? If we think about an ambassador, what does an ambassador do? An uh, ambassador for a king or a certain kingdom may represent the ideas that are thought of that king or that kingdom in, in inside and outside of the kingdom. So they may convey or, or um, send message of uh, the king's ruling or a certain decision the king has made. Or they may go outside of the kingdom to a new nation. And once they go to that new nation, they represent the king's word. They are the ones who present the decrees or tell what the king has decided and tell it to this new nation. Now, look at this about ambassadors, which I found interesting. An ambassador, once an ambassador goes outside of their kingdom to another nation to carry the message of their king or their kingdom. Everywhere they step foot in that in that uh, strange nation that they go to or that outside nation that they go to because they are there in that presence that particular perimeter is considered their kingdom that's right part of the original kingdom not the kingdom they're going to visit so what are we saying if we represent God and God's kingdom the kingdom of heaven but we come down here to, to the world to spread his gospel and his word on earth. Us being ambassadors for Christ means that everywhere we step here on earth, because we are there and we are present there, that perimeter is now a part of the kingdom of heaven. So by spreading his word and being his ambassador, we're literally building the kingdom of heaven on earth. Like literally, that's our job. And how do we do that effectively? That passage tells us we are committed to the word of reconciliation. So we simply spread the gospel. Everywhere we go, we we are representatives of the kingdom of heaven. Where we step foot now becomes the kingdom of heaven. And while we there, we spread the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is important for us to take away from this passage? us being ambassadors of Christ. Is that an option? Is that a choice? Is that something that, you know, we we can choose to do or we can say, you know, hey, some people have been great or have been uh, uh, given that particular job in the kingdom. Well, according to this passage, this is something that we all have a commitment to do. There's no choice in the matter. There is no option in the matter. It is all of us are ambassadors. Once we become believers, once we, uh, we accept the gift of reconciliation that God gave through Christ Jesus, that we now have the gift or the ministry of reconciliation ourselves. So if you refuse to do the work, you refuse to, to, to serve through uh, the ministry of reconciliation, then guess what? How can you accept the gift of reconciliation? They both go hand in hand. So we are ambassadors of Christ and it's not an option that we get to choose to be an ambassador for Christ. I'm not saying that works is, works is what gives us salvation because no, that's wrong. But once we receive the gift of salvation, it comes along with the lifestyle. And that's why Christ always tells us, count up the cost before you begin to make the journey. Well, let's say a quick prayer together. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to study this word. Dear Father, we thank you for um, giving us a, a brand new revelation of how being an ambassador for Christ is something that we have been called to do. If we haven't been doing so, allow the Holy Spirit to tug on our hearts and our spirit to, to show us how to do that, dear Father. Show us how to be an ambassador. Give us the guidance. Give us the strength and the courage to do so and to stand bold when it doesn't seem popular or it's not accepted by our friends and family, dear Father. Allow us to understand the importance of being an ambassador for Christ and understand that, you know, it's your will for us to do so. Dear Father, cleanse our, 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 our minds, our spirits, dear Father, our bodies, that we may be in line with you. Remove anything that is not like you. If there is any sin nature in our hearts, dear Father, reveal it to us and help us to correct it so that we can be cleansed vessels to do this work for you. And we ask this not that we get any honor or glory, but you get all of the honor and glory out of our lives. In Yahshua's precious name we pray. Thank you, Father. It is done. Man, I'm glad we could talk about the importance of being an ambassador of Christ, the, the responsibility of being an ambassador, what that means, and how we do so by spreading the ministry of reconciliation or the word of reconciliation, which is the gospel. Man, we're going to jump into another interesting topic next week, and we're building upon things that's going to help us to be better members of the kingdom of God. So until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you get the straight word with no chase.